guys uh it is a monday and i'm gonna film a youtube video for you today apparently i can't speak english i'm going to film a youtube video for you guys today um i am going to talk about some of the things that you can do with your horse that doesn't involve riding it uh, i think this is an important topic uh, what with all what's going on even if you're still choosing to ride or not this is going to be a good video because i'm basically going to talk about all the things that you can be doing with your horses at this time um even if you are still riding so I will show you some exercises and then some stuff that you can be doing, not even in the school. Um, and yeah, I hope it's interesting. I hope, well, I've got lots of stuff in my brain that I want to spill out into it. So I'll take you guys with me and we'll see how it goes. So number one on my list of things to do with your horse is to give them a holiday. Uh, this is Zora, she's four. She's been broken in and she's been doing her ridden work and she's been doing great. But I made the decision that while we've got this lockdown and while we are under the recommendation to not ride, um, that she can have a rest. And I think it's an important thing to remember that if you're wondering about whether your horse needs a rest, maybe this would be a good time to do it. Even if they're older, younger, whatever they may be, it's not going to do them any harm to have that rest and to give yourself... A break too from it. Um, I'm obviously going to give you guys today lots of other things that you can be doing with your horse but with young horses I think this is a really good time to allow them some time to grow and relax and rest. Obviously she's got a long career ahead of her I hope and so the slower I can take it at the beginning the better. So she came into work, she got broken in, then she had some holiday through the winter and now she's having some more holiday. And I bring her in to keep her off the grass a little bit because it, um, I don't want her getting too fat. She already is quite fat. So she comes in, she has a small amount of hay throughout the day. So it's spread out. So I trickle feed her essentially. And then she goes back out at night time and she seems really happy. So if you're thinking about that kind of thing, then don't feel like you can't. You most definitely can just give your horse a holiday. I think she's liking it. Wow, what a lady. Look at the size of her stomach. With her teeth hanging out. <laughs> what a what a vision you are zora graceful elegant part hippo oh i think she's dreaming what are you dreaming about can can dream next on my list of things that you can be doing with your horse while not riding it is lunging uh, a bit of a given but um yeah, I will gonna show you the many ways that you can lunge, as in the many things you can do while you're lunging. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in the tack room and get out some stuff. And then, yeah, I'll show you the many examples of me lunging a horse in many different ways. Here we have Hope. Uh, Hope is a horse, she's seven and she's a restart. So she um, has been ridden before, but it hasn't been very successful. So we have started again. She also had a wolf tooth taken out last week. So she actually, keep going please. <laughs> she uh, can't wear a bridle for a few days, about five, five to seven days, the vet said. So um, we're making sure that she's still working without the bridle. Uh, so you can see I've just got her here in a rope halter. So I like to lunge the horses in all different ways. Sometimes in the tack, sometimes not in the tack, sometimes on the long line, sometimes just on the rope halter. So here is another option. Or uh, here is another option of how you can lunge your horse, essentially. It doesn't have to always be the same way. I like to do it without the bridle on because sometimes it helps find that they can find the stretching posture on their own. So you can see here, she's starting to drop the neck down and really nicely relax on her own without any training aid whatsoever. Another thing that you can do with your horse uh, other than ride it is doing some long lining. I really like long lining. It's a bit like simulated riding. So 
you're able to work the horse from the ground, see how it's moving, but without climbing on board and feeling how it's feeling as such um, from being sat on their back. So uh, this is Nova, she's four years old. I'm gonna show you long lining with two separate age groups, four and then uh, one of the older horses. Um, she is quite established in the long lining. This isn't the first time that she's done it. And there is a video on my YouTube already called Long Lining 101. I'll attach the link. And uh, where I basically explain, 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 explain very in detail the setup and that sort of thing. But I'm just gonna uh, show you very simply how I long line a young horse and explain a bit about why it's really good. Okay. So I've got to set up in a roller with a half pad underneath just so that it's nice and comfy for her. She's just in her snaffle bridle, nothing particularly exciting. It is categorical that you should not lunge in anything other than a snaffle. Of course you can lunge in a head collar and I've shown you that already, but it's so important that you don't lunge in any bit stronger than a snaffle. It is unkind and it is a really absolute flat out no no don't do it so i've got nova in a lovely it's a loose ring snaffle with a lozenge in the middle and this is the bridle that i ride her in i've just taken the reins off so there's one less thing to be organized with um and i'm going to now thread my lunge line through the bottom ring on the roller um this roller has got quite a small loop so it can sometimes you can't fit the clip through now, if you had a, another person with you, then sometimes it can make it easier in that you don't have to leave the horse being stood still. But if you don't, then always keep one hand on them, like so. And then I clip the other lunge line onto this side. And as you saw, when I laid it over her back, I put it onto the saddle pad and on the, the roller, not on her bum. Obviously, if you had a horse that was a bit reactive, you might find that that wasn't the best thing. So it's important to really stay safe. Oh dear, knitting. So as you see, I'm still, even though I've dropped it on the ground, I'm still holding the front end by her mouth so that if she was to move, then she's not going to be pulling on her own mouth. She would only step on the lunge line if it was on the ground. Obviously you don't actually want to step, put it on the ground. That's not the ideal. Oh yeah, and put your hat on guys and wear a pair of gloves. And also wear a pair of boots. I've seen amazing videos on social media recently in their trainers not advisable so as i said nova does know about the long lining but still you want to be good want to be nice and cautious when you get started so megan's going to move out the way and then i'm just going to take my other lunge my other lunge line off her back like so and i always keep myself off to one side and i can start walking like this and then when i know that she feels nice and comfortable i can then slip that lunge line over to the other side and just go for a little walk around the arena to get you started sometimes when you first get started with a young one they go off quite quick and it can be good to have somebody with a lead rope in front of them just asking them to walk slowly but actually sometimes i find it's better just to let them start walking slowly and then once they're walking and they're established walking then i can practice some stopping and starting I've walked on both reins, changed the rein, um, a little bit of stopping and starting using my voice and with the pressure from the lunge lines. I'm now going to start working her on what we call double lunging. So this is great because I've got an outside rein and an inside hand. So if you have a horse that you lunge that falls in a lot, then this can be a really good way of encouraging them to stay out on the circle, but also um, encouraging them to work in a nice soft frame. So when you're doing it, working with a young horse to start with, I'll try and find some video of Nova from when we first started with her, but she did not stretch down into the contact like this. She was quite inconsistent and she didn't have very much top line. So it's been a really good way with the long lining to uh, encourage her to understand what the connection means. And then from here, I can just go on and lung, lung, lunge her um, how I would if she wasn't wearing the long lines. So you saw then when I pushed her forward, I used the back 
lunge line gently with incorporating it with my voice so then you get the feeling of her moving forward from the hind leg first which is what we are encouraging always when we're riding lunging anything good girl and i want to talk about something that's quite important the way that you hold on to the lunge line megan behind the camera will be rolling her eyes right now because it's been something we've talked about a lot but what you want to make sure of is that you hang the lunge line is it in focus uh, yes that you hang the lunge line on your thumb like that and then when you hold the lunge line you put your hand over like this so that it runs through your hand like this because if you put it like that the only thing that the lunge line is going to be gripping on is the lunge line itself and it is very slippery whereas if you have it this way round and you've got your good gloves on the contact that it's making is pretty much 90% with your hand rather than with the lunge line then it means you have much better grip and you're much safer on the end of the lunge line it doesn't mean that you can grip on more it just means you can have a bit more feeling and a bit more security in actually holding that lunge line and it not just sliding through your hand and your horse disappearing into the distance like hi ho silver so you see there she slows down i just move the back lunge line a little bit and uh she off she goes again So you saw there, whether she wanted to come and eat the dog or not, we're not sure, but she wants to come in on the circle and fall in slightly. And that means I can just take a little bit of outside contact and keep her out on the circle. It doesn't have to be a lot, you know, you have to be very gentle with the long lines because they, uh, well, they're very, you know, the horses are sensitive and you don't need to be pulling very hard. But your horse should then be able to start finding this balance and holding themselves out on the circle. So something I want to just mention is this is a great place to help train your horse to do something it finds difficult. So Nova is not particularly good at cantering. She finds it really hard. It's been her hardest pace for her to improve on while she's been on schooling livery. So this is a great place on the long lines where I can help her from the ground, see what's going on and encourage her to keep going. So I'll just show you what I'm talking about. And Nova canter. You see, she runs a bit into canter. It's a bit inconsistent, but I can just then keep her going. And then ask her to come back to trot before she falls out of canter. So I'm going to go and do that again. Hopefully the transition will be a little better this time. And over canter. Good girl. she falls out of canter I just ask her back good girl and her up. so I don't want her to canter for long I want her to be able to canter for a short period but in a good way and I'll only do that three four times on each rein just until she starts to find it a little easier and then as she starts to find it easier then I can build it up to cantering a bit more good girl so you see there when she comes a little above the bridle i can then just put a little more connection a bit more bend to the inside for example a little bit more inside rain a little more outside rain and then when she softens i can soften too such a nice way of watching them work and asking them to work in a better way at the same time Good girl. Good girl. Good. Good. So I'm going to go and take a change of rein. So I go from softening the outside and then shortening the inside. And then I'm onto the other rein with my lunch lines nice and organised, ready to go on the right rein. And then I will just go and repeat the same things again, basically. Okay. Here we have Obi. Uh, as you can see, similar setup, well, exactly the same setup, obviously just his own bridle. Um, and with Obi, we can then ask him for some more technical stuff 
Uh, so for example, the other day I was working on him going from walk to canter and we've also got some poles set up now in the arena that we can use as well. I really like doing this with the older horses. It's not just for the young ones to teach them. It's such a good way to really see what's going on and help kind of fine tune things that we are working on when we're riding on the flat. You can see he's much more established in taking that connection down. He wants to stretch down as natural. But there, the steering wasn't very good, so then I can think next time about maybe steering him a little early for the turn onto the circle. Good boy. And if you get really good with the young, the older horses, you can run around with them. I may demonstrate, I don't know yet. But you can change the rein in trot sort of thing if you uh, get good at it. Let's give it a try. the arena how I want him. I can work him with a little bit of <laughs> God. outside flexion and then take the inside flexion again. So when you have a horse that is very balanced on their own, you can then start working them in a slightly more complex way. There's a lot of depth to the long lining and I think it's something that's really undervalued. People get it a bit wrong and can uh, not use it as much as I would they you should basically but you can see he's really falling in on this rein and this is something that he does when I ride him so I can take the outside rein a little more strongly and then ask for the inside bending too I'm going to stay towards you good boy <laughs> so I was too far away for you to be able to hear what I was talking about but um, what I was discussing at this point was the use of more complex um, exercises when you are working with an older horse so Obi struggles really a lot with his walk to canter transitions when I'm riding so you can see here that I'm just doing that on the long line so it's a great an opportunity for me to work him from the ground watch what he's doing and help him make some corrections so there where he trotted that is often what he does when I'm riding so it's great to be able to start correcting it from the ground uh, and encourage him with that outside long line to really work from the hind leg to make the propulsion from the back end um, into the transition rather than pulling himself along and shortening the neck in the front end. We then changed the rein and had a little go of it on the right rein and actually he was better at holding the frame on the right rein and I was really pleased by the end of the session that the right bend had improved a huge amount. We've moved our workout uh, to the poles now. So I've done a whole video on how to set this up. So I'm not going to explain it all. They're just set at a normal trotting stride distance. Um, but it's really nice in the long lines, especially if you've got a horse that tries to divert or avoid the poles. Um, it's a really good exercise with the long lines on because you can keep them in the space you want and also feel on the mouth for that stretching down frame. Good boy. If I go for a little run again. How did you have to run that time? You're getting better. So something that I really wanted to mention in this video while we're talking about all these different ways that you can lunge and long line and exercise your horses. The most important thing above all is that your horse is relaxed doing what it is doing. This horse boots. Um, I previously showed in a, one of the other videos of me lunging him in a lunging aid, like with running reins on the side, and that's really good for him. But it also can create a little bit of a false thing for boots, um, like a false frame. He kind of just puts himself on the bit, but his whole body isn't really working on the bridle. 
So um, I'm going to show you lunging him today just in the rope halter and I'm finding that this has actually been very beneficial for him because then he is finding that stretching posture on his own. Relaxation when you're trying to build muscle is extremely important. The muscle needs to come under some tension. Come on, pay attention please. The muscle that you're trying to build needs to come under a certain amount of tension in the sense of pressure from them but not necessarily pressure from a forced frame so although long lining and training aids can be really good the horse definitely needs to be feeling them as an encouragement rather than a forced feeling um, and that's why I've chosen to show you lunging boots with nothing on because I want to show you how you can help your horse find this stretching posture without any training aid whatsoever. So Boots is a horse who I have been working with the groundwork now for a long time. Um, I'm not going to put that bit of information in here. If you guys want to see that, then I'll put the link to my Patreon page below and you can get started with the groundwork videos. But I'm just going to do a little bit of the groundwork with him before I lunge him. Um, and then, I, then it sets him off in this good positive frame of mind for then the lunging and the possible pole work that we're gonna do with him. I say possibly doing the poles because like I said, going back to that feeling of relaxation, they have to be relaxed when they are working in a harder way. So when I'm putting him through the poles, if he goes very tight and tense, that's not actually gonna be benefiting him. He needs to be feeling relaxed to then work over the poles and then for the poles to then be helping his body. Otherwise, they will just be encouraging him to be more tense. So I'm just gonna start by getting started by running through the very basic ground pattern and then uh, we will crack on with the lunging. For anybody that does want some more information of what I'm doing and how you can help your horse to find better relaxation in their work then uh, I will leave the link in the description of this video for, to my patron page um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just encouraging Boots to move his body in a way that is helping him understand his body and how it moves better he previously when we would first move his body like this would step each leg behind next to each other rather than through and underneath and as he then relaxes through and underneath he's then softening suppling more in his body and then I can encourage him when I send him out onto the bigger circle on the lunge to supple his body the same way so it is important that your horse understands this way of being in its body rather than you lunging it and then wondering why it doesn't have any idea what you're talking about so he understands that when I take a little bit of inside bending, that is to remind him of that same feeling that he had when I was turning the hind leg and doing the whole ground pattern. And I'll show you when he's in walk to make it easier, but you saw when I was doing the groundwork that I was doing the turning the hind legs, where I push the hind leg away and bring the shoulder, uh, bring the nose round towards me, sorry. So I, what I do is if I want him to be a little more focused on me and also to stretch down more, I just ask him onto a smaller circle and then I bring the bend to the inside until he stretches down, good, and then I let him back out and there again, I take the bend to the inside, good and then he stretches down into that feeling himself without any training aid at all and this is so important we've got to be able to get our horses finding this feeling on their own as well in the trot he finds it harder to stretch down he doesn't so naturally find that feeling down in the stretch so i have to again good boy just encourage him with a little bit of a inside flexion on the rope Good boy. And you'll see when I change the rein how different he is from the left rein to the right rein. So again, the lunging becomes such a nice way to be watching and learning about the way your horse is moving. And good. Um, good lad. So I've changed the rein, and you can see on this rein he's much better at stretching down. And this is potentially something that we're looking at in terms of his body 
is, is there a reason behind maybe somewhere behind or somewhere in his body where he feels not so good on the left rein as he does on the right rein? circle to ask them to uh, understand their body a bit more and this would be something that if you're doing working with the groundwork is going to be far more um, relevant and beneficial if your horse doesn't understand what that smaller circle means then this isn't going to be very helpful but um, for boots it's a really good um, way to remember that relaxed posture and then he was able to go and do some pole work without any training aid which for me is a real win because that wouldn't be something he could have done previously would it good boy super chilled my fifth and final thing that i'm going to talk about today is the things that you can be doing without even exercising your horse the things that maybe you don't have time to do normally as you can see i'm wearing some gloves uh i've cut my fingers actually mainly why but um so what i'm going to do is something that i like to do really as regularly as i can but it probably doesn't get done as often as we'd like to uh gary's feet are really good like makeover basically so um come around and look at gary's feet so Gary has just come in from the field. Now Gary wears bar shoes to support his feet. So these cover the frog. You can see it's covering the frog up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give his feet a really good scrub and then show you guys some stuff that you can use to paint on the feet to help keep them dry and bacteria free. Um, obviously everybody is in a different season all around the world. So the ground is starting to dry out here, but we have just come out of a really, really wet winter. So you can see that he's got a bit of a sheared heel. So we can be treating his feet um, very carefully and looking after them nicely to make sure that doesn't get any worse. So step one is I'm gonna wash and scrub his feet. I've got a um, dand like a body brush and I've also got a hoof pick with a really good brush on the end of it and a sharp hoof pick. Some of them are really blunt and rubbish. So I just wash the outside of the foot like that. Oh, that's a bit sharp there, Gary. Thanks very much. And then I wet the inside of the foot. And be careful, obviously, keep your face out of the way. If they feel the water on their foot, they might just kick you in the face really nicely. Oh. Okay. Now that I've wet the hoof, I'm just gonna really carefully go and pick it out go through under all the gaps and just give it a really good scrub and right now this doesn't look very 
helpful or useful. Gary, get up please. Good boy. But um, you'll see why in a moment. And I rinse the foot. You can see that this starts to become a bit cleaner. And you just repeat this until the hoof is totally clean underneath. It gives you a good opportunity to look at the hoof, make sure there's no patches of blackness that is a bit manky, for example. Let's carry. So I'm really careful with the hoof pick not to like stick it in there, basically in that part there. I just make sure that I'm brushing around the area and then rinsing it out with water. You wouldn't want to do this very often because we don't want to be encouraging the horse's feet to be particularly wet, but it's not a bad thing to do every now and again, just to make sure that there's nothing untoward going on in the hoof. So you can see now that you're starting to see that we're getting these parts down into the side of the frog that are actually a bit black and a bit stinky. Like they're actually not very clean at all. So I can then scrub in those even more than I was before. I then just use the brush of the hoof pick to give his hoof a nice scrub. You can see he's got this little crack in the toe, so I make sure that it's nice and clean and there's not getting any dirt stuck up in there that's going to creep up and make that crack worse. I would then just go and repeat this with all four feet. So now that um, I have washed all of his feet, as you can see they're all sparkling clean, um, I'm going to wait for them to dry and then once they're dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them with this stuff. So this is iodine and sugar. Where's the iodine at? Just under there. So it's um, just from Amazon, 10% solution. It's a tenner, I think. And then I have some granulated sugar. The more granulated the sugar, the better. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint that all over the inside of his hooves. This works really well in helping to harden up what's going on inside the feet and it helps to kill any bacteria that might be there that isn't necessary. Um, the amount is about two thirds sugar, or about half half actually, probably half sugar, half iodine, and you want it to form a kind of a paste like that. So then that sticks really well. So that's why we use the sugar. It helps stick it to the sole of the foot. It doesn't work very well when the hoof is wet. So that's why I'm gonna wait for his hooves to dry before I do it. But you really just wanna paint it all on the inside of the hoof and up into that hoof crease about around the shoe where he um, has a bit of a sheared heel. So, um, Gary, go going, mate? I'm done. I'm done with your film career today. And then once I've done that on the inside, then I would use a bit of some Kevin Bacon hoof dressing, which is a bit of moisturizing stuff basically. And uh, that is what my hoof care is essentially. Uh, I would do this with them maybe twice a month. Doesn't need to be too regular in terms of scrubbing the feet out and stuff, but making sure that their feet are staying nice and dry and nice and bacteria free. But that concludes my five things to do while you can't ride your horse video. Um, things like giving your horse a haircut and trimming its beard and all the rest of it, you can do all of those sort of things too. Uh, I have got videos about all of those um, that I will put in the link below or on the end page of this so that you can, well, give your horse a little, give your horse a little horse makeover too. I hope you like the video. Please give it a share and let's try and get through this horrid time all together and help each other out and spread some positive messages about what we can be doing with our horses in this time. Um, thanks for being a great model, Gary, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.